Auckland City Hospital neurologist Barry Snow has developed a flowchart to help doctors diagnose and determine the best treatment for vertigo. It's almost a joke, but it's been a tradition for doctors to feel dismayed when their patient says, I'm dizzy, or you read the referral letter and saying, I have a dizzy patient. Uh, because in the past we didn't have a really good structure for understanding this, and there was a sense that we may not get anywhere with this and may not be able to help the person. And what I've tried to do is break it down into a simple decision tree. It certainly doesn't address all dizziness, but it will pick up the majority of patients and help the doctor uh, classify them and send them down the most um, useful tre treatment pathways. Using the tree, GPs first need to determine whether the patient has any neurological signs, for example, vertical nystagmus. If so, the patient needs to see a neurologist. If not, the GP then has to categorise the dizziness into one of three groups. Is it intermittent and only with movement? Is it a sustained episode over a period of hours? Or is it a new episode and continuous recurring dizziness? If it's new onset intermittent, uh, it's quite likely to be benign paroxysmal positioning vertigo or BPPV. BPPV is a disturbance in the semicircular canal, most often in the lateral canal. An otolith comes loose falls into a small clot and rolls around in the canal fluid, causing vertigo when the patient moves. One way of diagnosing BPPV is by performing the Dix Hallpike manoeuvre. The Dix Hallpike test is a what called a positioning manoeuvre, where we are swinging the patient through an arc and we're trying to make the little wee clot of, uh, of otolith swing through the semicircular canal. In the Dix Hallpike manoeuvre, you're going to what you're trying to do is you're trying to rotate the canal like this so that the, the little clot or the stone rolls along the canal. So here's the head at about 45 degrees. Tip back a bit. Keep your eyes open and look at this part of me. We're going to go one, two, three. When you tip the person down with the head back, the eyes bounce down in a rotary fashion like this. Bounce, 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 bounce. And usually it happens after a pause. So you roll the person back, They'll pause for a moment and then they'll stiffen in your hands as they feel it coming on and then their eyes start to bounce, bounce, bounce like this. It goes on for about 10 to 15 to maybe 30 seconds. They don't like it very much and you can see the eyes settling down, settling down and the patient will tell you the vertigo is gone. And if that occurs on one side but not on the other side, then you've got a positive diagnosis of the uh, BPPV. Now then you can go straight on to perform the sister manoeuvre called the modified Epley's manoeuvre, which actually is the treating manoeuvre. Now, you've got your little stone rolling around in the canal, and if you use this analogy of the cupped fingers, uh, the drain or the exit for the canal is at the top. And now the modified Epley is where you then continue to tip the patient around in such a way that you can roll the little stone out. We've tipped your back, we've reduced the vertigo, and with the expectation that the stone is sitting in a canal about here, we want to keep rolling her around until we can drain it out, the drainage which is up here. So we now rotate her head gradually to the left like this, but keeping it down all the time. It's critical that the head is dependent. And we rotate her. Now I'm going to keep rolling you, and I want you to roll until your nose is facing the floor. So we're going to have to roll your whole body out. And so the nose is in this plane now. Then get the legs off the bed. I'm going to help you sit upright by keeping the head that direction. When you're going to do a Dix Hall Pike maneuver, you need to have several things in mind. Firstly, only do it on a patient who you're pretty sure has BPPV. Don't do it on somebody with sustained nystagmus, for example, or vertigo. Second is really get your head around the understanding of the anatomy best you can, because then you'll be able to position the patient properly. You've got to talk to your patient because they don't like it, they don't like vertigo, and it's rather alarming to be thrown over the end of the bed. So they've got to be, uh, uh, they have to understand what you're doing and actually welcome the nystagmus when it comes on, or the vertigo when it comes on, because it's not pleasant. But if you can convince them that if we can produce the vertigo, we might have a diagnosis and a treatment, uh, the patient feels a whole lot better. And you need to be precise with your movements too. The person has to be positioned properly and you need to make the movements quite quick and one of the mistakes is to go too slow. You need to be able to swing these semicircular canals uh, through an arc in such a way that you'll get the overlift rolling along.